Now, I did a video a while ago, you'll find linked down below on ZFS expansion. At the beginning of that video, I say that there's a future where we can expand a existing RAID Z VDEV by one disk, and that future is here in September of 2024. Well, technically it's in beta because we're going to be doing this with TrueNAS Electric Eel, but that beta will probably be out soon, maybe October all depends on when they get all the little bugs worked out, but I wanted to demo this functionality because it's available now in the beta and it's available in OpenZFS. This is a really great feature people have been asking for with ZFS for a long time. And for those wondering the deep technical details for how it works, I will leave a video linked down below by the FreeBSD Foundation where they dive well, very deep into the weeds for how this functions. The goal of my video here is just to show you how to do it and keep it relatively simple. But if you wanna know how much engineering went into this and why it took several years to do, hey, that video is a great way to dive into those topics and learn a lot more. I also recommend watching my other ZFS video because I dive deeper in that one into some of the other uh, idiosyncrasies, if you will, to expanding ZFS, because there's more than one way to do this. This is just an add-on essentially to that video for doing RAID Z expansion. So let's get started. Are you an individual or forward-thinking business seeking expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Maybe you're part of an internal IT team that needs to proactively manage, monitor, and secure your technology. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific requirements. Whether you need fully managed or co-managed IT services, our team is ready to help you. We specialize in supporting businesses that require IT administration or teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance their operations. Our install team is ready to assist you with all of your structure cabling and Wi-Fi planning needs as well. To learn more about any of our services, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out the Hire Us form, and let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, Check out our swag store with shirts, hats, dust accessories, and more. We also have affiliate links down below that'll get you discounts and deals on products and services we talk about on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Now, as I said, I'm running the beta version of Electric Heel 24.10. And it's September of 2024, so this is what it looks like, but I don't expect this to have many changes when the full release is out, and I'll probably do some updated videos when the full release comes out. We got to start with a couple rules. First, we currently have a RAID Z1. If it was a Z1, Z2, or Z3, doesn't matter. You can expand any of them if they're encrypted or not. You can expand those as well. The rules, though, are that you can expand one single drive at a time, and that drive has to be the same size or bigger. Now, if it's bigger, you don't get advantage of it bigger. So you still have to have all the drives in a RAID Z VDEV be the same size, or they will essentially conform to the same size as smallest in there. So if I were to have a series of drives bigger than the 1.7 terabyte drives that I have, technically two TB drives that are SSDs, if I were to put a four terabyte in there, I don't get that extra space because they do have to still be symmetrical. But the fact that I can add one at a time is awesome. Now, the other thing that still works, and I covered this in my previous video, is yes, you can slowly replace each drive, resilver them, and then have a larger pool based on that. That's still functionality that works. So if you were to put a bigger drive in now and then later start swapping them, yeah, you could still do that. But this is just how to add those new disks to the pool. Things you cannot change though, if this pool was built with RAID Z1, it will always be RAID Z1. Adding more disks simply makes it a wider VDEV, will give you more space, but will not change. And there is no option or future plans that I'm aware of to change the Z type. So if it's Z1, Z2, or Z3, it will always be that from time of creation. But the process is actually really simple. We have right here where it says manage devices. And please note, I have a few unused disks that I'm ready to add on here. So if we go to manage devices, then we click on the RAID Z we want to extend. Of note, so we're extending this RAID Z1. If you had multiple of these, you could extend any one in particular. And it's simple. You click the extend button. It's gonna find the disks that are at least that size and list them out for me, because there's actually more disks in here. If you notice it's five, but there's only showing four. They have one disk that's smaller and it's not eligible to be added to this pool. So we're gonna add this one drive. Now what happens when we add the drive, and we're gonna click the extend right here, waiting for expansion to start. This is the really important part. Now you can see what's running right here. I have zpool status expansion demo and zpool IO stats. So you can see the IO stats where we just added a drive and we're now writing to that drive. That's why the writes are so high down here at the bottom for this new drive that we added. You can't simply add a drive 
and have it magically work because think about it, you have data on those other drives, but you still leave the data on there, but you need to create the parity with that new drive. So it's not copying all the data, it's copying all the parity. Now, this is where it gets a little bit complicated and that video I mentioned that the FreeBSD Foundation did explains this in greater depth, but I'll give you the really short version here. Essentially, we started this out with three drives. All data written to those three drives is still on those three drives. That's important because it only has a stripe width of that three drives. The stripe width has now been increased to four drives. All data written after now has a stripe width of four. The reason that matters is there's a little bit of performance challenges that may come with this. Not huge, but it is a factor. Basically, you have the ability to read off of four drives any new data, but all your old data will only pull from those three drives. So there's some maximum potentials for the old data. Now, is there a workaround for this? Actually, there is. And I talked about this before with in-balance VDEVs. When you add an entire another VDEV, which is another feature that's supported, this will allow you to rebalance them. And it's just a really simple script called ZFS in place rebalancing. Sounds fancy. All it's doing is copying the files, making another copy and copying them back. Ultimately, you could also do this by copying all the files somewhere else and copying them back. It's doing the same thing, but it's doing it all in place. This just makes it a little bit simpler so you don't have to copy them and copy it somewhere else. So either method works, it'll rebalance them. So all that data will get refreshed and moved across all drives that you expanded. All right, so now we're back over in Chernas and the drives have been expanded. So we went from 1% usage to 0.7% usage. And you can see the updated usable capacity. Let's talk about doing this again. And we can go here and we're going to go over to manage devices again. And we see that there's now four drives. Let's go ahead and add a fifth. So we'll extend this again. Choose one of the drives, extend. We can see the same process happening again here while it goes through. It's taking a little bit longer because now it's got to pull it across those drives and copy all that data again. But it's going relatively fast. By the way, this is a CPU intensive operation because it has to recalculate all the parity. So be patient and this will take as long as it needs based on how much data you have. It at least gives you, as you can see here, how long it's going to take. And we've got about eh, just under 40 gigs worth of data here. How fast it's copying. It's got another minute to go. Now the VDEV was successfully extended and now we have five drives in here. And like I said, we can keep going through this process. There are limitations in terms of how wide you want a VDEV. I don't know right now in 2024, depending on the drives, these are SSD, so it's probably not too big of a deal, but going over 12 or 15 can be a little bit of a challenge because if you make a VDEV really, really wide, it can be challenging to re-silver when one of those drives die because it's gotta pull all that data across all those drives. So there are some limitations where you should consider adding another RAID Z to this. So for example, we have a Z1, we can add another Z1 to this pool. I cover that in my other video. Now coming back over here to storage, you can see once again, we've updated again the usable capacity. So now we have more storage available and we still have a couple more disks if we wanted to cycle through this a few more times. Now, earlier in the video, I did say the RAID Z type can't be changed. So if it's a Z1, Z2, or Z3, adding drives will not change that. Also of note, if it's a mirror, you cannot convert a mirror to RAID Z. That is not a feature that is available now. And to my knowledge, I don't think there's any engineering going into converting the VDEV types. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's a future you're watching this video where that has also been added as well. But this is just the current status of things right now. It's been in OpenZFS for a while. It's been in testing for a while. It is now in the UI of Electric Yield and that's what this video is about is how to add one more drive to a vdev leave your thoughts and comments down below like and subscribe to see more content from the channel head over to my forums forums.lawrencesystem.com to engage in a more in-depth discussion than you can in the comments on this topic or any other topic you see in the videos check out my video playlist on SureNAS and zfs that dives into a lot of different topics zfs is a really complicated system and i've got a lot of videos explaining it and you'll find those linked down below in the playlist all right thanks